The grind to pirate legend can be a long, grueling, painful, time consuming, uh, painful, um, grueling. However, it's what all pirates on the Sea of Thieves strive for and once you reach it for the first time, it's a pretty good feeling. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get there in as little time and effort as possible. So strap in, and let's get into it. Before we get into the video, I'm currently live on Twitch, so if you do like the video, make sure to not only subscribe, but also come into the stream and say hi. Uh, and if you need any more help in getting to max rank for any of the other trading companies, you'll find more guides on my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to get yourself to Gold Hoarder level 75 within a super short period of time, and I will show you how this all works later on in the video. In order to do this strategy most effectively, you're going to want another crewmate on a sloop, or alternatively use a three-man crew on a brig. First things first, you're going to want to start hopping servers. What you're looking for is to spawn at Ancient Aspire Outpost. Once you've found your server, start stocking up your boat with supplies. Grab as much as you can just in case you need it later on. After that, find and raise the Gold Hoarder's Emissary Flag on your ship. You'll find this situated next to the Gold Hoarder tent at the bottom of the island. Before you leave though, make sure to start the legendary Storyteller tool tower you'll find this next to the bar lady, Tasha. This will decrease all of the island spawn skeleton's health to just two sword hits, so it will make your life so much easier in the long term. Finally, go ahead and raise your anchor and get sailing straight east over to Morrow's Peak. Once you're at Morrow's Peak, get everyone in your crew to buy an Ashen Vault Voyage, and just to give a word of warning, the higher level your pirate is already, the better the voyage will be. High level voyages will have more of a chance of giving out golden vault keys which will give you much better loot. Mid tier voyages will give you more of a chance of getting silver keys and finally lower tier voyages will have more of a chance of dropping stone vault keys. However because you're in the devil's rule all of your loot no matter which tier key you get is still going to be quite profitable. Start by getting one of your crew to place down their voyage you will receive a gold hauler compass which will lead you to map parchments around the devil's rule. Follow the compass until you reach an island which it points to. You'll know if you're on the right island or not as the compass will shake more rapidly as you approach the island. Make sure you're looking out for any rowboats and treasure chests on your way around the Devil's Roar as these will come in super handy later on and I will show you what I mean by this later on in the video. Hop off your ship and onto the island, follow the compass until it continuously spins in a circle when stood still, get out your shovel and dig up the map parchment. Majority of the time, skeletons will spawn once the map piece has been dug up. Make sure you kill these skeletons and some of these will drop ashen trinkets, which will largely contribute to your emissary level. Once killed, you should have trinkets on the floor and a map parchment. Load the trinkets onto the boat and take a look at the map. What you're looking for is an X marks the spot. This has a chance to appear on any of the map pieces you pick up, so it could appear on the first piece or it could appear on the last. You should also check your compass again while you're on the same island as it can also spawn multiple map dig ups on the same island. Once you have the X on your map, head over to the island it relates to. One quick tip, if at any point of your adventure you are passing by Morrow's Peak Outpost, make sure you shoot out and grab more voyages. This will allow you to stack for longer and make more reputation in gold. Once at the island with the X, dig up the chest, this will contain a vault key. There are currently only two vaults in the Devil's Rule, one at Ashen Reaches and another at Fletcher's Rest. Grab the key and load it onto your boat. At this point, I feel it would be best to explain a couple of optimizations for you to enable you to do things a lot quicker when not looking to open up some vaults. There are several situations where you will dig up a key on the opposite side of the Rule to where you need to be. My advice here is to hold on to your key and start a new voyage. Keep following that compass until you get your next key or if you're doing a new voyage and the compass takes you to the island where you already have a key, do both the dig up and the vault at the same time. Essentially you want to keep your keys until it's convenient to do the vaults. This means only doing them when you land on the island uh, through digging up a map piece or digging up a chest with a key inside. This will often result in you having multiple keys in the same island. Don't worry, this is actually a very, very good thing. If you happen to have multiple keys, this is what you want to do. Bring all of your keys to the vault and then do one. Leave all of the loot outside the door and then about 30 seconds to a minute after it's finished, place in your next vault key. 
then do the vault again and again and again until you run out of vault keys. Now actually doing the vaults, you need to make sure your boat is parked in the best position possible for each. For Ashen Reaches, you want to park your boat on the north side of the island in between two rocks so your harpoon can reach the cliff edge above you. The vault here is buried inside of the cliff on the north side and this in my opinion is the better vault out of the two. If you're struggling to find it, look out for a painted sun on the wall. For Fletcher's Rest, you want to park on the north side around by the rock just past the outlying sandbank. This particular vault you will need a rowboat for it to be most effective, so by now you should hopefully have one. If you do, then great, take your rowboat around the sandbank and into the glowing cave. Inside of the cave you will find the vault location on the right side wall. If you're struggling to find this, look for a bird painting. In order to do the vaults most effectively, if you're a duo sloop, have one person immediately climb to the top of the room. This is where the best loot is and it will also allow you to see all of the other loot on the lower levels. Start dropping off all of the loot and get your partner to shift all of the drop loot to just outside the door. The person on the floor should also do the puzzle for the chest of tributes and if you don't know how to do this, uh, here is a little tip for getting it done quickly. Grab at least one medallion. Once that is in the table, look what the pitch dictates. Change the first pillar on the far left to match the picture on the table. Now head to the final pillar and there should be two sides of the pillar which share your image. For me, it was the skull. That means it can only be two combinations. The combinations show three images which need to be present on the other three pillars. So we start with the skull on the left and are just trying to fill in the other two. One of the combinations won't exist and there will be a picture on the final pillar which won't exist on the other two. For me, I managed to get this first time which was a single link vertical chain and an up facing pad lock and key. If you want a brig, have one person dropping off all of the loot, one person shifting all the loot outside and one person doing the puzzle. Once everyone has done their role, keep shifting the loot until all of it is outside the door and then proceed to grab any extra gold if you wish. Remember to lower your emissary before leaving for that extra bit of gold and if you aren't wanting to bank during this process until you've completed several vaults, don't be afraid to stop off at Moro's to lower and re-raise the emissary for that little bit of extra reputation. With all of that, you should be well on your way to max level under the Gold Hoarder Trading Company. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, check out all the other videos on the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.